Hello, my name is Eric Willison. I've been to Disney World a lot, a great many times, and I'm going to talk to you in this video, this second of several videos, on how to save money in Disney World down in Orlando. And this is going to be more of a specific money saving ideas video as opposed to the first one, which was more about value enhancement and how to have a better time get more bang for your buck down there. Um, this one is going to concentrate on how to save money on ticket purchasing as far as getting into the parks. Remember, there are four different parks that you can go to. There's the Magic Kingdom, there's Epcot, there's Hollywood Studios, and then there's uh, Animal uh, Kingdom. So uh, you can go to any of those parks, and each of those parks is going to cost uh, money to get into uh, for each day. So, the first idea for saving money at Disney World, as far as purchasing tickets, is to buy your tickets as soon as you possibly can, such that your vacation may be much later on. So, uh, the, idea, the idea behind this is that Disney changes their prices once per year, usually happens in October or so, and that's when the, the prices go up. But if you can buy your tickets, let's say in March, for let's say a Disney vacation that's gonna take place in November after the prices change, if you buy them in March, you're gonna get last year's prices even though the tickets that you're purchasing will be in the next year. So you can save that five or six percent jump in prices by buying your tickets before the October price jump. So if you feel like you're gonna go in sometime after the price jump, uh, try to get them as early as possible. Now, another thing that you can do is you can buy your tickets through a membership group um, for instance, uh, I will usually, since I'm a AAA member, I will usually buy my tickets through AAA and I get anywhere between 10 to 15% off of the tickets because I'm buying them through AAA. So that's another thing. If you have any, if you're a member of any sort of an organization, they may provide you with a discount, uh, on Disney tickets. You should ask and you may receive. Third. If you are going to Disney World more than once in a 12-month period, you may want to think about getting a yearly pass or an annual pass because it's probably actually going to be cheaper. And it's going to be cheaper because of, for two reasons, okay? Now, there's, there's to, to my mind, there are two best times to go to Disney World from a point of view of the weather. And the best time I think to go is either in uh, spring break time, maybe uh, late March, very early April, uh, or any time in November. Because, you know, November things are starting to get kind of gray and muddy up in Ohio, and uh, it's nice just to go down there and still have the nice warm days. And in late March, early April, you are so tired of the Ohio winter by that time. It is just so nice to just get down there in the Florida weather and just have those 75 degree, 80 degree days max and just walk around with that in shorts and a t-shirt for the first time in what seems like a million years. So you want to go at those times, well, one time we uh, went down there uh, at, at, for spring break and we were there for say, I think six days. It was pretty expensive as far as tickets went. Although the more days you get at the same time, the more the tickets are reduced for each day. So let's say if you just went down there for one day and I'm just gonna make up some prices here, hypothetically, one day the park ticket might be $100 
Uh, but if you went two days, it would be $90 for each day. So you'd be saving $20 over the two days. And three days, four days, five days, six days, the, the, the more days you go down there each day, the ticket price reduces. Now, if in that one situation, uh, actually it was more than that because we went down there for a spring break and we were there and we decided we were going to come back in November because that's my daughter's birthday is in November. And so we knew we were coming back. And when we compared the prices, uh, we found out that we could get uh, an annual pass for each person for about $575 per person. Whereas if we had done the seven days for a spring break and then done five more days in November, and each of those days was at the price they were at individually, it would have been more than five seventy-five a person. Uh, and then we were even going to be maybe coming back again in the previous, the, the, the next March. Uh, so that, it, that would have actually been three times within a 12 month period because the spring break for that next March actually came much earlier in the year or earlier in, in the month of March. So I would, we would still be within the 12 months. And so we even did that. We came back a third time and saved even more money because once you paid that five seventy five dollars per ticket, it's basically free to get in. So that's one way of saving money through the annual pass. But what makes it even easier is that they will let you retroactively buy your annual pass. And here's what happened. And then here's the best illustration of it. So we go down there for, let's say, um, March uh, 30th through April 5th, let's say, for spring break. And we just, we didn't buy annual passes. So then we decide, that, hey, we're going to come back in November. So we go to buy the November tickets and the lady at the counter says, you know, if you buy annual passes, it'll be cheaper. And the money you've already spent on the individual passes, the non-annual passes for this March 30th through April 5th that you've been here with us now, we will credit that money against the purchase of the annual pass. So the annual passes came out to be about $3,000 for the five of us maybe a little bit more, maybe 3,100, 3,200. We'd already spent 2,100 on the passes for the time that we were there and just about to leave. But if we were able to credit that $2,100 against the purchase price of the annual passes. So to buy the annual passes was no longer 3,000. It was only a thousand because we already had paid 2100 and they credited that against that and that enabled us then to just pay that extra thousand dollars and for that we got all the passes we needed for the November trip and for the next spring break trip because it was still within that 12 month period because of the way that the spring breaks happened to fall that year or that two year period I guess so it's like it's like paying retroactively and, and you, you get the benefit of what you already paid if you change your mind and say, hey, I'm not just going to come down here one time. I'm going to come down here more than once in a 12-month period. Uh, another way of saving some money on the park passes is to have what I call some hotel days or some uh, maybe what you just call uh, non-park days, resort days. If you're staying at a Disney resort, it's going to have a lot of amenities. It's going to have some really nice pools. There's a bar at each of the pools where you can have a drink. Um, there's going to be activities uh, at the uh, at the whether it be at the hotel you're staying at or if you are a DVC owner, and that'll be a whole nother video because that you can save a ton of money on DVC uh, and um, 
there's just lots of things that you can do there at the resort. As a matter of fact, there's even golf courses, there's tennis, there's all sorts of things that you can do. And so why not, if you're going to be there for say six days, uh, why would you want to necessarily go to the parks all six of those days? Maybe you just want to relax uh, on two of those days. Sleep in, you know, have a nice late breakfast, walk around the, the hotel, uh, maybe, who knows, catch a movie, swim at the pool, um, or pools, plural. There are a lot of the places that have more than one pool. Uh, and just take it easy on two of the days, and you'll have saved a lot of money on park passes, and your family will still have had a great deal of fun especially if you're coming down there at a time when you know you come from a northern climate where it's really really cold and you're going down there and having a, a nice uh, warm uh, week in the sun so uh, just you know catch up on your reading sort of thing you got a balcony on your uh, on your room or whatever so schedule some hotel days that's another way of saving some money uh, another way of saving some money is what are called park hopper tickets versus traditional uh, sort of all day tickets. Um, and so you pay extra for what's called the park hopper option. What that means is if you've got park hopper, then it doesn't matter what, you can go to any park you want. It doesn't matter. You can go to Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios or Animal Planet, they're interchangeable. And you can go to all four in one day if you wanted to. It'd be kind of silly because you'd be spending a lot of time on the transportation going back and forth rather than uh, uh, you know, going to the for park time. But maybe you go to Magic Kingdom in the morning and maybe you go to Epcot in the afternoon because that's the way your fast passes may have worked out, maybe. Um, Maybe you've got dinner at uh, some place uh, at Epcot uh, in the in the evening at one of their restaurants there, like the Garden Grill, uh, or but in the morning you didn't want to go to Epcot because you've already been there, so you that's your Animal Kingdom day. Uh, so in the morning and most of the day, maybe up until two or three o'clock, you're at Animal Kingdom, and then you uh, take the transportation over to uh, Epcot and ride a few rides there and then have dinner and then go back to the hotel. It doesn't matter because you've got Park Hopper, you can go wherever you want and it's no extra charge. Well, it is an extra charge when you buy the tickets. So to save some money, don't get Park Hopper, just get the regular all day pass. So, hey, I know on Tuesday we're going to Magic Kingdom and so I'm just buying Magic Kingdom tickets that day. Uh, another way to save money is to go at a time when the schools are in session. You know, most people don't want to take their kids out of school, you know, to go to uh, an amusement park. Uh, so you're going to pay more for summer. You're going to pay more for Christmas, that Christmas break. You're going to pay more for spring break. You're going to pay more uh, around Thanksgiving. Because people are trying, or Labor Day or Memorial Day, People are trying to get that combination of days where they can get down there for four or five or six days and their kids are only really missing a day or two of school because they're sort of compressing in those weekends and that day off. You know, sometimes they might have like a, a parent teacher day on a Friday and then the next day is Martin Luther King, next Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and so you got those four days off right there. And so really, if you took off that Thursday before, and that Tuesday after, you're only missing two days, but you're getting almost a whole week down there. And so, but those are gonna, t you're gonna pay more because everybody has that idea. And so Disney's trying to, to encourage the parks not to be so crowded on those days uh, where, it's, where, where the kids are out of school by making it cheaper to go on the days when the kids are in school. So. You know, you might not want to take, uh, you know, some high school kids who are going to go down there and they're going to miss some tests and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that might not be a great idea. But if your kids are in second or third grade, it's really not going to hurt them that much to miss a week. I mean, 
how much you know, they're, they're going to be missing some finger painting. What are they going to not know how to print the letter Q? I mean, they're going to they're going to be able to make it back up again. So think about taking your kids on days when uh, there is school, and the the biggest savings that you're going to get on park tickets are right after the Monday after the big holiday. So uh, on those days, on the, on the, if, if school is starting up on, let's say like the Wednesday, uh, right after uh, the 1st of July or January, uh, that's when you're really gonna get uh, the, the park's gonna be just empty and Disney World knows that and they want people down there. So they're gonna give you the very, very low rates on tickets for right after spring break, right after the, turn, the, the winter break, right after uh, uh, that, that Tuesday after Memorial Day, you know, that, that's when there, there's, there's gonna be the, the really good deals on these things. Now, another way to do it, save some money, is what are called uh, midday tickets. In other words, you, you can't get there until like one or two in the afternoon. The morning is all for the, the, the people with the all day passes. Uh, but if you're a late riser, you don't like have, you don't, don't like getting there at nine in the morning or eight in the morning or whatever. You want to take it easy in the morning, maybe have a nice uh, meal at the hotel, and then go on over and and just sort of do it in the afternoon. Uh, midday tickets are a way to save a lot of money on park tickets. And another way to do it, which is of course doesn't cost you anything, is to sign up for their email list uh, and. Disney will email you any kind of special offers they have as far as, you know, hey, we reduced prices on this or reduced prices on that. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh my God, that's the last thing I need is to have somebody else sending me junk mail. But Disney, they are very, very careful with their customers. They're not looking to annoy their customers. So they're not going to spam you with email after email after email. I mean, I'm a Disney uh, uh, Vacation Club member. I am a, I've been going there, I've gone there almost every year since 2008. And I might get one email from them a week. So, you know, you would think that they would be sending me something every single day, but no, they don't do that because they're not trying to be annoying. They're very good about customer service and their relations with their customers they're not going to spam you and all that kind of stuff. So getting on their email list, generally when you get an email from them, they're talking about something that you might be interested in that might save you some money. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is sort of a sneaky way to save money, perfectly legal. Uh, you know, you go to the, your grocery store uh, around here in Ohio, it's a Kroger or a Giant Eagle. But you know, whatever you have in Virginia, it's, you know, Farm Fresh or Piggly Wiggly, or I don't know what it is out in California or whatever, but whatever big major chain of grocery stores you got, you go, you walk by these little, this is little rack and it's got gift cards, gift cards for, you know, Cabela's Sporting Goods. It's got gift cards for, you know, certain restaurants, this, that, and the other. You can get Disney gift cards and you can put as much money on there as you want. Okay. And the thing is, that oftentimes you can buy the gift cards at a discount. So if it's a $50 gift card, you're actually only paying say 45 bucks for it, okay? So you're saving five bucks. But if it was a, let's say $2,000 you put on there and they're letting you save 5%, now that's 200 bucks or a uh, hundred bucks at least. You've saved a hundred bucks, okay? But beyond that, you're purchasing the gift card at the store and you're getting store perks for that. So at Kroger, I get gas perks for when I buy things at Kroger, whether it's milk or oranges or whatever bread, but they don't, it doesn't have to be food. It could be whatever they sell and they sell gift cards. So if I put 2000 bucks on a gift card at Kroger's, I'm gonna get 2,000 bucks worth of grocery purchases gas perks, which is probably gonna take my gas price down from $3 a gallon, which is what they're normally, which is what we're normally paying around here in uh, Ohio in the 
late summer of 2021, probably going to be down to like 10 cents a gallon for a while. So uh, if you buy those gift cards uh, at, the at, the, at the store, you can get those gas perks or whatever else comes along with it, save some more money there. Uh, you know, filling up my minivan is about a $60 adventure, but if you got enough money on that, uh, of those gas perks, it could be, save yourself 60 bucks, okay? Uh, and then lastly, if you use a credit card that has maybe, you know, flight, uh, airline miles or whatever, to buy that Disney uh, card, then you get the frequent flyer miles too, which if you're flying down there, hey, that can save a lot of money. Now you can use the Disney card for literally anything related to Disney. You could take it down there and just everywhere you go, whenever you wanna buy something, just hand them the Disney card, zip, Okay, you just went from 2000 down to 1900. Uh, you know, you could buy a, a, you know, Disney merchandise or whatever, but your park tickets, you can use it to buy the park tickets. You could use it to pay for your hotel, uh, as long as it's a Disney property, obviously. Uh, any money that you would be giving to Disney, it can be done through that card. So that you purchased that gift card. So, getting the Disney card can save you a lot of money by getting it and getting the, like I say, the fuel perks, getting the frequent flyer miles, and then getting this discount of the card itself. So those are some ticket purchasing ideas on how to save money or how to save money through ticket purchasing. Uh, and I'll have some other videos about how to save money on your accommodations, how to save money on your, how you're getting down there. Uh, and on merchandise and all that other stuff in some upcoming videos.